What's up guys, Josh here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Aeon X7S. This was sent to me by Aeon, they are allowing me to keep it for full disclosure, but they're not paying, asking, or otherwise trying to influence me to say anything good or bad about this product. And the funny thing about most products is like, there's there's the, the kind of things that you can go over, the things that you can talk about, that are, are obvious, like power specs, right? And all those things. And then there are some intangible things that we kind of conglomerate up into what we call the user experience. And uh, that is something that is gonna be personal. It's not always for their use, it's just for their kind of intangible experiences. And this is one of those products that I just really enjoy using for one reason or another, despite the technical aspects to it. Uh, now we're gonna, of course, go over the technical aspects to it, but um, every once in a while I run across a, a product like that and this is one of those products where it just has the right feel, has the right looks, like the volume knob feels a certain way. It's all just kind of adding up to this experience that I really, really enjoy. Now, that's personal, take it for what it is. So first off, we have to talk about the build quality of it. And this is a very, very solid brick of a device. And I guess since we're talking about the build anyways, uh, there's uh, gain stage switches at the bottom. At the front, you have a quarter inch headphone output, a balanced or really a four pin XLR headphone output, more on that in a second, and then a, a very, very nice volume knob. I actually, I wasn't super sure about this volume knob when I kind of first saw this thing, but after using it, I really like it. Uh, power switch on the back, RCA in, RCA out, that is volume controlled and a power input. Now you'll notice that there's no XLR on the back. So this is not a, at least to my understanding of it at least, uh, this is not a fully balanced amplifier, but it is a class A headphone amplifier that has a XLR output. So your balanced headphones are going to work on this if you have a balanced cable. And the headphones that I tested on balance for this were the Clear, the Alex, the uh, Sundara, and out of the single ended, I tested the DT1990s like usual. Um, regarding the power output, this is a class A amplifier, like I said before, and at max at about 32 ohms, it puts out about 1.7 watts. So it's a fairly powerful amplifier. Um, you know, there's not really a whole lot to say about the power. If you want to read more on the specs, there's a link to, the, uh, to their website down below. But like I said multiple times in the past, I am not a, a massive guy in terms of measurements. I care more about the user experience. And and uh, probably sounded a little bit like a broken record there, broken record there, broken record there. So what does it sound like? Well, uh, really, really good. Uh, there's one key feature to this amplifier that I tended to pick up on even in my own like kind of blind tests. It just seems to have like a little bit more confidence and authority than uh, many other headphone amps I've tried. Like just the confidence of the, it, it, that's the only way I can explain it. It's very strange. It's not something that I can directly put my finger on. So now, I think that the dynamics of the THX are probably better, but that's obviously a much higher priced amplifier. But regarding the actual sound production of this, I, I have absolutely zero complaints or issues with it. I prefer it over the Jotunheim, for example, and the Jotunheim's back there, which is why I'm looking over there. And I also like it to what I think it should be is kind of like a mid-range step up from some of the lower cost, but still really good uh, $100 headphone amplifiers like the JDS Labs Atom and the aforementioned Liquid Spark. Um, or if you have a Magni or something like that. I think this is maybe not a step up in power compared to those. Like it's not massively more powerful um, and it probably doesn't even measure as well. For uh, whatever reason, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but I, I love listening to this thing. Um, and I don't exactly know why. And it's weird for me to, to come to you with that sort of conclusion, because uh, normally I, I to really try to hone down on the finite details. I guess that's almost a good thing because like my reference amplifier, for example, is a THX 789, right? And that is a, a powerful and a very exacting headphone amplifier. And to have another amplifier that is able to kind of go a little bit toe to toe with it in terms of sound quality and not have any obvious errors, at least on my part, and even some parts that are a little bit beneficial to it, that's really, really impressive. So to wrap this up, like I said, I think it's a good mid-range price amplifier, but if you're looking for like an amp upgrade to either the mid-range tier or going to the, uh, you know, from like a $100 headphone amp to this, uh, I think this is a, a great step up. The build quality is solid, the size is nice. I guess if I had one complaint to make, and I know this is kind of unavoidable, but the power brick is uh it's pretty big um and you know it's it's 
a large portion of the size of this, so you have to have somewhere to put that. Not a massive complaint, and that tends to be the issue with almost every amplifier is they have big power bricks, but uh, either way, it is something to consider. I guess that's the only complaint I have. Other than this, it gets just a, a glowing recommendation from me. I, I really enjoyed this thing. I think the price point is right. The power is nice. The sound quality is excellent. So I think that's it, nothing more to say. Thank you guys for watching and a big thank you to the continuing support of the patrons. If you want access to early videos exactly like this one, uh, go ahead and check out the link in the description below. Until the next video, my name's Josh, signing off. <laughs>